Welcome back to the channel, guys. My name is Josh Doyle, and if you're new to the channel, I am a licensed realtor, investor, and developer located in servicing the greater Toronto Hamilton area. And in today's video, I've put together a full free eight-step guide on how I find high-quality tenants for myself and my clients. And knock on wood, guys, I've got a 100% success rate with getting my tenants and my clients' tenants to pay in full on time every single month, okay? So, and I'm not just talking about one or two clients, guys. Myself, personally, I have over 30 tenants and I've placed countless tenants for clients. I honestly don't even know the number. So, um, this isn't a small sample size. I've done this many, many times and I still have not had any trouble, guys, with getting my tenants to pay me in full on time every single month. So, without further ado, guys, we're gonna jump into the eight steps. If you guys want the downloadable PDF, leave a comment down below, guys, and just say that you want the PDF, and I will actually send it to you guys, or I'll send you the link down below. You guys can download it yourself. Um, you're probably going to want this because it's going to have the exact example of my Google form, and well, you guys will see. Let's get into it. Step number one, first impressions are everything. I know this step seems obvious, but a lot of people overlook this. You want to make sure that your rental unit or home is in extremely clean condition, presentable. You are essentially selling this place to a tenant, right? So you want your place to stand out from all the other units. You would be shocked at how many rental units I walk into that are just in terrible condition. People aren't cleaning inside the cupboards, inside the stove, the, the microwave, the dishwasher, the fridge. A lot of tenants walk into these places and they're thoroughly inspecting them. They're opening up the fridges and all these appliances and whatnot. So you want to make sure you do a good job here. Have the place very clean, presentable. Always think about the type of person you're looking to attract. If your place is dirty and unkept, what type of tenant do you think is going to want to live there? Okay, step number two is to take high quality photos and video. What you're going to want to do is you're going to go into the property prior to taking the photo and video. You're going to turn on all the lights, open up all the window coverings to get as much natural light and artificial light into the room as possible for your photos and video just to get that high quality uh, imagery. And then what you're going to do is take your photos of each room um, in portrait mode, so in with having your phone vertically, and then take the video tour of your place in horizontal or landscape mode because it's going to be viewed better when we upload it online. Also, major, major point here, guys, is that you're going to want to take your video tour from the street if you can, or try to remember to. What I like to do is I'll stand outside the house, facing the house, and I'll be act. I'll basically act as a tour guide, okay? So I'll say, hey, this is 123 John Street North uh, for the main floor, two bed, one bath unit you guys are about to see. And while I'm outside, I'll say, here's the parking. You know, there's two car parking that's included with this rental unit for an additional $50 a month or, you know, whatever you have your setup to be. Here is the outdoor backyard space, which the tenant is responsible for. So you'll see as I'm kind of walking through is what I like to do is I like to just point out as many things possible because a lot of people don't read the rental ad. And a lot of people also just look at the photos and photos can be deceiving. So the video is going to save yourself and the tenant a lot of time when you start pointing out things like, hey, there's a common stairwell that you have to climb that you share with other tenants to get to your rental unit. So if they just looked at photos, maybe they didn't see that or the photos didn't represent that accurately and they wouldn't have known that until they actually came and looked at the property. So I've had, before I started doing the video tours, I wasted hours of driving to and from properties just to open the door and somebody say, oh, like there's no closet in these bedrooms or I didn't know we had to go upstairs to get to the rental unit. And it's like, well, you know, even if I did a good job with the rental description of trying to describe those things, a lot of people don't read. A lot of people just browse through the photos. So a video is your surefire way to eliminate any discrepancies between what the tenant thinks they're getting and what they're actually getting. So make sure you do a video tour. If you take one thing from this guide is video tours will save you a ton of time. And also make sure you download the guide 
because it's gonna actually have a link in it where you can go and watch a video tour that I've done to give you guys a little bit of inspiration and show you guys how easy it actually is. Step number three is marketing your property. Now that you've cleaned it, gotten the photos and video taken, where are you gonna post this information? I personally like to post it on Kijiji and Facebook Marketplace and Facebook buy and sell groups online, locally to where the property is. So say the property is in Hamilton, I'll go on Kijiji, make sure that you're posting it with the proper postal code. And some people don't like putting the address, I'll at least put the postal code so people know the, the general uh, neighborhood that it's in. And then on Facebook, I usually do the same thing. And what I'll do is I'll make sure that the photos and video are of course on the rental ad. You're gonna to wanna to be as descriptive as possible in your rental ad. And you, this is your opportunity to set yourself apart from every other rental ad that's out there. There's a lot of lazy people that are just putting two bed, one bath house for rent in Hamilton with some, you know, kind of not so great photos, definitely doesn't have a video, and don't go into details about what's included, what amenities are around, um, what updates they've done to the property, anything like that. So I really like to try to sell my property or my client's property in the rental ad or in the video that you take or even in the photos that you take. Really try to do a good job on this because like I said, first impressions are everything. So this is your opportunity to uh, have a first impression through the internet, through the photos and video and through your written description. So uh, post it on Kijiji and Facebook. One thing you need to be mindful of is how many people are posting on these uh, platforms. And so say you post it today and it's a Friday, your rental ad is probably gonna be on the third, fourth, fifth page in 24 to 48 hours. And a lot of people are not scrolling that far or clicking that many pages to look at rental ads. So you're gonna to wanna to, number one, either pay to make sure that your ad is staying at the top so it's always being seen and getting the most exposure possible, or you're gonna to wanna to delete the rental ad after about 24 to 48 hours and repost it, which is, more manual work, but honestly, I think it's worth the investment of uh, paying to keep your rental ad at the top and making sure you're getting the maximum exposure possible so we can get the property rented as fast as possible and at the highest dollar uh, price possible. So Step number four, pre-screening interested parties. Okay, very important. Typically what would happen in the past is somebody would reach out to you through your rental listing on Kijiji or Facebook and then say, hey Josh, I'm interested in seeing this. Uh, when can I come and see it? You guys would set up a mutual time. They would come out, you would meet them in person. You would then start asking them a couple questions, show them the unit and see if they're even interested in it, okay? You'll notice that what we're doing here, especially with this step, is we are trying to eliminate that step of the process. And we're trying to make sure that people have as much information as possible up front and that you're gathering as much information up front about the other person, the interested party, before showing them the property in person. You don't want to waste time, theirs or yours. So what I do is I create a Google form. And what a Google form is, it's an online application hosted through Google. It's 100% free where I will create a questionnaire with very strategically picked questions that ask the interested party, the prospective tenant, about their whole situation, about income, who's gonna be moving into the property, if they're smokers, if they have pets, uh, their credit score, all things like this, okay? What we're trying to do is we're trying to get a overall picture of who is applying to live in this rental unit so we can make an informed decision on if this is going to be the best person or the best fit for your rental property. So extremely important. You're not gonna wanna miss this. It was an absolute game changer when I found out about how to do this and then started implementing it. It not only saved me tens of hours, but uh, it made the whole leasing process a lot smoother, a lot less stressful. And so what I do is once somebody reaches out to me, I send them a pre-written message that I have saved in my notes file on my phone that contains a little blurb, right? To asking somebody to fill out the, um, the form and then to message me back when the form is complete so I know to review the form for them. 
then I will go and review the form and I'll make a decision on if I think this person is fit for the rental property. If they are, or they have, or there's multiple people that I think are good quality candidates, I'll try to invite them all out to the property at the same time or within like an hour span. So that way I'm not going back and forth to the property, try to condense it all like open house style. And if it's just one person that I just set up uh, one meeting with them and that's it. Very easy, uh, very smooth process. And of course, if they're not a good quality applicant, then I just don't respond back to them. Or if they're, they keep bugging me about it, I just say, sorry, we went with somebody else. Step number five, in-person rental showing. You're gonna to wanna to tell all of the appointments that you set up that you live out of town and require at least a one hour text or call to confirm that the people are still coming on your scheduled time that you guys set up. You wouldn't believe how many times people will schedule a time with you and then just completely ghost you. So very important that you get that confirmation text or call one hour prior to your appointment. Number two is you're gonna to wanna to arrive early, open up some windows, get some fresh air in there, turn on all the lights, open up all the blinds and window coverings, get some natural light into the property, just like you did for the photos and video. And number three is, I mean, this is your chance, this is your opportunity to screen the person for a second time in person. So you're gonna to wanna to go with your gut feeling, your intuition, and what I like to call is the vibe check, right? See if they pass the vibe check. So you're gonna to wanna to see things like, what are their mannerisms like? Um, are they presentable? And another big thing that I like to look for is did they take their shoes off when they walked into the property or did they just come in and just start, you know, walking into the living room, walk up the stairs on the carpet with their shoes. That's a major indicator that they probably won't take care of your property if they're okay with wearing their dirty shoes from outside indoors. So just a couple of things I like to look for. It's also a good opportunity to engage in conversation with them ask them some further questions that maybe you didn't put on the Google form. And any applicants that pass this stage are gonna be officially invited to apply for the property. Step number six is the final review process. This is where you're gonna ask the applicant to give you the documents that are gonna support all the information that they gave to you in the Google form application. So what do I mean by this is their credit report, their pay stubs, a letter of employment, a, a, a government ID. So these are all things that you're gonna need to basically back up the info that they gave you and to make sure that everything lines up. Now, not just that, you guys need to be extremely skeptical and make sure that all these documents are number one up to date, but they're also accurate and they're real, okay? A lot of people are forging documents or falsifying information by editing the text on documents to increase their income, to change their credit scores, all these type of things, guys. It is very challenging now for people to uh, be able to afford some of the, the rental rates. And so people are getting desperate and they're falsifying information so they can actually get access to rental uh, apartments or homes that they typically wouldn't be approved for. So be very mindful of this and keep this in mind when you are reviewing the documents that people give you. Step seven is getting the lease agreement signed. So what I like to do is I use Ontario standard lease agreements. Uh, Ontario has come out with a template that they want all landlords to use as lease agreements. So I use that, I've included that in the downloadable PDF guide. So if you guys download it, it's there for you for free. You can download it nice and easy. And you wanna make sure that this lease agreement is signed, or sorry, is filled out in full and accurate, okay? Cross your T's, dot your I's. The landlord tenant board is not fun to deal with. It takes an extremely long time to actually get dates in, to actually see the landlord tenant board, and then even longer for them to do anything about your problem. So make sure your lease agreement is filled out in full. You don't miss any details. This contract is what's gonna save you for any discrepancies or arguments that come up between you and your tenant. So once again, make sure it's done and done properly. And what I like to do is I will sign, I will fill out the lease agreement and I will send it via DocuSign for electronic signature. I'll have the tenant sign it first 
And then when it gets sent back to me, that's when I'll review it again and then I'll sign it myself. Step number eight is rental deposit and key exchange. Very important that you do not hand over the keys until you've collected first month's rent and last month's rent deposit and you got proof that the tenant has tenant insurance and has swapped over the utility bills into their own name. Okay, if that's a requirement of yours and you're charging the tenant for utilities. So what I've seen happen before is a landlord will get excited that they have a tenant, the tenant will, you know, they're on good terms, they just met each other, the tenant will say, hey, I would like to move into the property early, can I get the keys to start moving a couple things in? Next thing you know it, the keys are handed over, the tenant moves in, landlord doesn't get first month's rent, second month's rent, third month's rent, the tenant ain't going no anywhere, and the, ten the landlord a couple months down the road after dealing with this is now filing for eviction. Six to eight months later, the tenant finally has an eviction notice and they've got a year of having a tenant squat in their property, trash the place, and they didn't collect a single dollar for rent, okay? So I've seen this happen before, it doesn't happen all the time, but it definitely happens. Be very skeptical when you're going through this process and make sure that you cross your T's and dot your I's from A to Z, okay? It can be very exciting to finally find that tenant and you think that they're awesome and you just wanna get things done and over with and hand over the keys, but you really need to take your time from the very beginning to the very end. So that's it for this process. I do have a bonus step that is in the guide. It's step number nine if you want to achieve top dollar rent. So I will leave that for you guys to discover if you download the guide. If this process is or seems daunting to you and you don't feel comfortable about doing this, I'd be more than happy to represent you as I am a fully licensed realtor and I've done this many, many times for clients of my own and myself. So I feel very confident in this uh, with this process. Reach out to me. I would love to help you. Thank you so much for your support and watching the channel. If you guys wouldn't mind, please hit the like button and subscribe to the video if you already haven't. And I will see you in the next video.